Welcome back to Anxiety Slayer. I'm Shan Vanderleek, here with my sweet friend and co-host, Ananga Sevier. Following in from last week's episode, where we talked about being newly diagnosed with anxiety, today we're talking about what our listeners wish people understood about living with anxiety. We loved having input from the members of our private Facebook group who kindly shared what they wish was more understood. Hello, Ananga. Hey, Shan. Thanks so much for reaching out to the members in in our private Facebook group to get some more input on this. I know we've talked about how to help our friends and loved ones who suffer with anxiety, but I love this take on what I wish people understood about my anxiety. It's a, it's a different story, isn't it? I think it's really important. And, um, There are so many areas in our life where we wish we were better understood. Anxiety, depression, chronic illness, grief. There's so, so many areas where we need more understanding. And anxiety is one of those and such a difficult thing to live with and such an isolating thing to live with already. I think one of our key concerns is that when we don't feel understood, we feel more isolated with a condition that can already make us feel quite hard on ourselves at times and it just exacerbates that. So I'm really grateful to the members of our Facebook group who spoke up and shared their thoughts and experiences and looking forward to sharing what they have to say. So I hope it will be helpful. And the first bit of feedback that we got I thought was so powerful and that is that anxiety is not something I'm doing to myself. And the actual quote itself was, I wish people understood that I wasn't doing anxiety, that I wasn't doing it to myself. I have frequently received the comment that I am creating my own problems and have been made to feel like my anxiety is my fault. It would help to hear that I'm understood and that my friends and loved ones acknowledge that I'm actually doing the best I can. Mm, the end of that statement really struck me, you know, to hear that I'm understood and they acknowledge I'm doing the best I can. Sometimes with anxiety, we're really trying to do the best we can, aren't we? But it still feels like you're falling down a hill and you're kind of grasping at rocks and tufts of grass on the way down and you're, you're just in this awful free fall where you haven't got control of your mind. Your mind's just crashing in with all these fearful thoughts, the symptoms in your body. It's a horrible, horrible experience. And it takes a lot of courage to live with and and deal with. So that really hit home for me. It really helped to hear that I'm understood and that they acknowledge I'm doing the best I can. Understanding is going to come around more and more, and there's a slightly different take on it coming up in, a, in another comment, which I look forward to exploring in more depth. And here's another comment that really stood out. I wish people understood that I know how crazy I sound or how irrational my fears are. The pervasiveness of those anxious thoughts are the battle that I'm fighting. You can't talk me out of my anxiety by telling me it's an irrational thought. I'm pretty smart. If it were that easy, I'd have done it because I know it's irrational. Wow. Right? That's like mic drop. That's so well put, isn't it? Yeah. A really smart person suffering with something really hard to deal with, and she's got the intelligence to observe it but she's in it she's in the in the storm i remember when i was young and i was met with uh non-empathy and and non-understanding and it would go one of two ways it would make me feel worse like there was something wrong with me and i needed fixing and i didn't even know where to begin with that or it would make me angry and i would feel like you know i haven't got a switch on the back of my head that i can just flick and switch all this off and if i did do you think i wouldn't flick the switch Right. If you're listening in today because a loved one is suffering from anxiety and you gratefully are not, but you want to be more available and in support of someone you love, here are some symptoms of an anxiety attack that it might be helpful for you to be aware of. A pounding heart, gasping for breath, 
feeling faint and lightheaded. You might feel nauseous. You might be sweating and shaking. Anxiety has a definite physical set of symptoms. I remember, gosh, it's probably been 20 years ago now, a friend of mine who was much younger than me at the time was having all of those symptoms and had to call emergency to have an ambulance come because he wasn't sure if he was having a heart attack or what was going on. Again, at the time, he was probably 25 years old, so it just didn't make any sense uh, at, at that point. And then come to find out, he was suffering from an anxiety attack. And it just didn't even occur to him that that could be the case based on his age, based on not having had that experience before. And then his um, lovely partner helped work with him through through these very real symptoms. I wish I could say that that was the only time that happened, but having it happen and having it diagnosed and then knowing the choices he could make and, and with support, he did much, much better uh, in, the, in the days and years after that. So again, anxiety is not to be taken lightly. The physical symptoms, the mental symptoms are not to be taken lightly. When I was volunteering in a charity shop here in the UK before um, coronavirus and lockdown, and it wasn't possible to do so, I was spending a lot of time talking with people in the shop and outside the shop. And one day I was talking with a, a woman who worked on UK ambulances, and she told me that nearly 25% of emergency calls in the UK requesting an ambulance are related to the symptoms of anxiety. Mm. So one in four calls that she was dealing with were anxiety symptoms. No one calls an ambulance unless something's happening in their body that feels that serious. And from that point on is quite a journey because as the whole topic of this episode is really how much we suffer or find relief according to how we're dealt with or, you know, who meets our experience, whether that's a healthcare professional or a friend or an employer or a loved one, a partner, whoever it is, we all have the opportunity in our interactions with each other to cause each other great distress or to offer each other great support. And one of the gifts of anxiety is that it really can help us look at that and think, I don't want to cause distress to anyone else. Now, I was thinking about when you go to the emergency room and you've got those symptoms and you're scared because you think you're having a heart episode and they say to you, no, there's nothing wrong with you. It's just anxiety. Right. Sometimes you'll be met with somebody kind and they'll refer you on and it can be the beginning of getting help, but sometimes it isn't. And then you come home and you feel like you're having a heart episode, but you're told, no, no, it's just anxiety. So the symptoms are that real. And yet the word just is used. And I always look out for these words, just, and at least these kind of bypassing, modifying words. Right, right. When you're having a, a horrific experience. So from this comment, I would urge anyone, if you're not being met with kind help from one individual, go find somebody who's kinder, go find somebody else, because there are people who can support you. Join our private Facebook group. Look up Anxiety Slayer on Facebook. So much support and understanding in there. We just had a comment this morning from somebody saying, I love this group. And she was sharing, she was getting out to her religious meeting, she was getting to the store more, and she felt really understood and supported. So go where people understand, and you can find some hope. Yeah, it really brings me so much joy when I see feedback like that in the group, to know that we can make these choices, that change and improve our lives. And the value in that is just it's just huge. And it, and it could be the smallest step forward and it matters. It really matters. Let's uh, come back to anxiety and how, man, it can come out of nowhere and it certainly isn't always rational. Yeah. Two comments we received on this. Again, these are comments from our Facebook group. 
something I wish people understood. It can come on out of nowhere, no matter where you are or what you're doing. And it might last moments, minutes, or months. And that's a very scary thing. If you really stop and think about that, you can have an anxiety episode when you feel like you were doing okay. And you might feel better in a few minutes, or you might be with it for a week or two, or it might be the beginning of a really challenging, ongoing spell. And I would invite anyone who hasn't had the experience to just sit with that possibility. It's a heavy possibility. Somebody else added anxiety can strike randomly and without warning. And consider how that might feel to your friend or loved one. Mm. To be in that space, to not have to try and solve it or just it or it's only it, <laughs> but to be, to, to do your best to have empathy, to put yourself in their shoes, to have sympathy if you can't have empathy, to be in that space of, oh my goodness, okay, uh, this is much bigger than I realized. And we know that. I mean, we've talked about the, the triggers that come from anxiety, whether it be f- flight, fight, or freeze in the body, how it sends stress hormones pumping through our system that can absolutely make us freeze on the spot or just want to bail and, and run for our lives. Yeah. I've run out of rooms because of anxiety. When I was a youth, I can remember going to uh, social events and uh, I would just start to feel extremely unwell and I would lean on the wall and feel like I was going to faint. And then I would just start pouring with sweat, just dripping, which as a young teenage girl, I didn't want anyone to notice that. And I would run out the room. I would just run outside and hope nobody noticed me and try and calm myself down and, and just wait to go home. And I think in the end, I became quite avoidant of those kinds of situations. But I can remember it happening at school. Um, really, really difficult, especially when it starts manifesting physically. And the last thing I wanted was anyone to notice. But my body was saying, hey, look, she's shaking. She's pale. Right, right. It's just horrible. It was a life-ruining experience. And I think... With so many things that, that we go through, there's, there's that saying, you know, to walk a mile in another's shoes. And, and the unfortunate reality is that often we don't understand unless we've lived something, but we can at least try and understand. I remember an older friend I had at the time who just said, oh, that sounds awful. That sounds like you're really suffering. And that meant the world to me. She hadn't suffered with anxiety. She didn't know. She didn't understand, but she understood enough that it was awful. And it was one of the few comments I received at that stage in in my life that made me feel validated and heard. I was grateful to her for managing to put her mind somewhere closer to my experience. And again, you know, we all have the opportunity to, to do that and not to just write people off when they're going through hell. Or charge in with the why are you so dramatic? Or, oh my goodness, you're so high maintenance. And whether you're saying those words or thinking them, the person who's suffering knows. They're thinking it themselves and then having that reflect back as, you know, kind of a, oh, there she goes again, versus realizing that this is genuine suffering with very obvious physical symptoms. And it's not just anxiety. It's never just anxiety. And it's easy to think that you'd know how to cope if it was you until it's you. Yeah. Until you have your own experience with it. And that is something that brings us back to the importance of being as sympathetic as you possibly can because this is somebody you care for this is somebody you love and of course you don't want them to suffer so please don't belittle them when they're having these irrational thoughts or when out of nowhere have been struck with an anxiety attack understanding triggers is another helpful 
place to explore when you're suffering from anxiety or when a loved one is is suffering from anxiety. Some of the feedback that we've received is that being able to understand my anxiety and what triggers it helps me communicate to others. They don't always understand, but they accept how I feel. That's really big because if you know what's bringing it on and you can communicate more about that, there's a clearer line of communication there and an invitation for more support. Yeah, I really liked uh, receiving this comment. This was one of the comments I was referencing earlier in this episode when I said about like a different take on communicating our anxiety. To me in here, there's some self-respect and real thought around handling anxiety, being able to understand my anxiety. You're, you're validating your experience of anxiety and understanding what triggers it. There's some clarity there of the experience and then communicating the triggers to others. And um, sometimes somebody else accepting how we feel is as good as we're going to get. But it's something. It's something that's worth having, some acceptance. And the, the courage to come forward and communicate at all is, is huge. Yeah, it's brave, it's clear, and, it, and there's some self-validation of the experience there, isn't there? Yeah, I thought that was a really good comment to share. And then another person said, I can't explain how I feel to others. So I take care of my needs because it causes me more stress trying to explain it. I can maybe tell them what triggers my anxiety and let them know that, and they can help me that way. Which I thought, again, another just a very transparent comment about, hey, when I'm in it, Trying to explain it is, is not going to happen, but I am aware of the triggers and maybe that can help. Yeah. Again, really smart handling of the experience and understanding it, validating it. Another really, really good comment to share. And we touched a little bit earlier on empathy and sympathy and that came forward as well as I wish people could be more empathetic towards us and stop telling us just to do it and it will be better. Just to get over it and it will be better. Mm. Empathy is not auditing another's experience. It's not telling them what to do. One of the quickest ways to isolate somebody needing support is to expect them to respond how you think they should. But it's not about you. You cannot know what another is experiencing and you cannot help them unless you honor their experience. There's a whiff of control to that, isn't there? Mm-hmm. You know, telling us to just do it and it'll be better and better for who? Yeah. Maybe better would be substituted with convenient, more convenient. Yeah. But again, who wants to add to somebody's suffering there's a lot of talk in the health press at the moment about mental health and isolation and the stigma about speaking up and, and we all need to make sure that we're someone that's safe to talk to if somebody's suffering because there's a great vulnerability in speaking up and if you meet with someone that's just going to push back on you and say you'd be better if you did this or you know why don't you just do that, why would that person open up again? It takes a lot of courage to speak up and then you get, just get a door slammed in your face. So if we want to have a discussion about mental health, why don't people speak? That's why it's not always safe to speak. So we need to make sure it's safe and that people can be heard with respect. On the other side of this quick break, we'll be talking about how some days are easier than others, how anxiety isn't black and white and how no one would choose to feel anxious. Now a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. Taking care of your mind is more important than you can possibly imagine. How we care for our minds affects how we experience life, so it's really, really important to invest time and care into keeping your mind healthy. There are many ways to support a healthy brain. 
whether that be crossword puzzles, learning a new language, making time for power naps, and of course, there's better help online therapy. Sometimes therapy is actually one of the healthiest things that you can do for your mind. BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat therapy sessions. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can get matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Our listeners get 10% off at betterhelp.com slash slayer. That's betterhelp.com slash slayer. Before the break, we were talking about empathy and the importance of doing your best to understand what another person is experiencing, to at least honor their experience, whatever it looks like. Another comment that came up in the group that I thought was so potent was that you may be seeing me at my best, but you don't see what happens in private or when I'm suffering an anxiety attack. That really resonated with me big time. It made me think of a time back when I used to do a lot of public speaking and how much I struggled before getting on stage. Even though when I got on stage, you would think it was my calling. <laughs> but it wasn't. And, and maybe it could be again or will be or whatever, but that person that you saw on stage was not the same person who was preparing for that speech and putting myself and, you know, through the paces of, of trying to be perfect or whatever the case may be. So some days are easier than others, and we are so multifaceted, and we're incredibly strong and creative and smart. Here's a good use of just. <laughs> just because you suffer from anxiety does not mean that you aren't all those things and more. And we're used to showing our highlights, Rue. It's expected. Mm -hmm. Many of us go on Instagram and we'll share a photo of something beautiful. And it might be on a day when we're really struggling. And uh, we show up as our best and we show our best from trying our best and from feeling vulnerable for so many reasons. So, yeah, we see and hear people at their best. When we first started this podcast, for many months I was nervous recording because it felt like public speaking. You know, you're just putting yourself out there and thousands of people are listening and that wasn't really easy for me to do that. But for the desire to help and reach out to others and um, my own experience with anxiety and knowing what it's like. So I do understand because I've been there yeah. and I know what it's like and I felt there was a duty of care to share and try and help. That's what drove me to do it. But I would be nervous for months. I don't think I knew that. I think this is my, my first time learning that. So thank you for continuing all these years. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, just to be really honest and say that we don't always see what somebody's, somebody's going through. That's so true. And here's how you can help. If you have a friend or loved one who's suffering, just start by letting them know that you're there for them. Listen without judgment. And maybe offer a big hug. Bring them a glass of water. Or a cup of calming tea. If you have some lavender oil, put a couple drops on a tissue and, and bring it to them so that they can inhale the lavender. It has such a lovely calming effect. Invite them to change up their environment by going outside or inviting them to go for a walk. Breaking down the barriers is, is a big part, too. That there's so many barriers that come up and Anxiety can be incredibly lonely. And sometimes our family and friends are scared to reach in. And often the person suffering is scared to reach out. But the connection is essential in overcoming anxiety. Whenever you can, offer a hug, a, a pat on the back, something that you can do. Hold their hand and connect. What, whatever feels like the right thing to do between you and this person that you care about. It means more than you could possibly know 
just to let them know that you care by your physical presence and to help them feel more safe and grounded. Yeah, just to be with someone who's huge, to be able to sit with someone when they're suffering. It might not feel like enough, but it's, it's good. It's good and it's valuable. We'll wrap today by talking about how important it is to see the bigger person beyond their anxiety. Hold in your heart what you love about this individual soul who happens to be living with anxiety. Your loved one may be suffering from anxiety, but they're not just anxiety. As we talked about earlier, they have many talents and roles and character traits. Let them know that you see them and appreciate them well beyond the anxiety that they suffer with. If you find them funny, tell them. If you find them kind, tell them. If you find them creative, make sure you tell them. And if you can remember times when they've shown courage or wisdom, tell them. Anxiety feels like it takes over everything, but from the outside, you can see more than the symptoms. So be sure to offer positive, heartfelt encouragement. It means more than you could possibly know. Following many listener requests, Ananga and I are working on a new course for calming anxiety with Ayurveda. The course will be available at the Anxiety Slayer Academy later this year. But if you want early access, we're releasing the new lessons as we create them to our top-tier patrons. Become a top-tier patron and get early access to what is sure to be a popular course for anxiety relief. Visit patreon.com forward slash anxiety slayer if this feels light for you. And thanks for listening.